Namaste everyone. How are you? Today I am going to talk about remedies and in the remedies also. Specifically, today we are going to talk about one of the most uh, favored remedy that is regarding gemstones. Like since time, like since Middle Ages, I think, yeah, or even before that, Gemstones have been used as a remedial purpose. Though in the classics of astrology, gemstone as a remedial measure is not recommended. But for that matter, nothing is recommended. However, the uses of gemstone as a remedial measure is not unauthentic. The Muhurta text of Vedic astrology, which deals about Muhurta, recommends the wearing of gemstones specifically for pacification of planets the approach is simple that if a planet is creating problem in his dasha antar dasha because of his transit or because of a particular combination in the natal horoscope then the gemstone related to that particular planet should be worn or should be here this is the approach that is followed also I will talk a bit about this approach. But before talking about the approach, the important thing that one needs to understand is regarding the choice of a gemstone. Of course, gemstone is a apt remedial measure. And after wearing gemstone, one can actually feel the positive changes in life, provided the fact that it is recommended properly. Now the thing is for sun, ruby is recommended. For moon, pearl is recommended. For Mars, coral is recommended. Red coral, not the white one. For Mercury, emerald is recommended. For Jupiter, yellow sapphire is recommended. For Venus, diamond is recommended. For Saturn, blue sapphire is recommended. For Rahu, hazonite is recommended. And for Ketu, cat's eye is recommended. Now there is a you there, there there is a thought which tells that which talks about sub substitute gemstones or sub gemstones rather say. Now gemstones don't only work for remedial astrological remedial purpose, but since ancient times. Gemstones have also been used for therapeutic purpose in the matters of disease also. So there are many thoughts and many saying, you know, that if you drink wine in obsidian cup, you will not get hangover. These kind of multiple things are there. So, you know, therapeutic and medical uses of gemstones is also done at many places since long. Now, the approach is that, you know, if ruby is costly, then you can take a substitute gemstone for ruby and that will also work like ruby. That I don't believe. First of all, as I always say to my students, you know, remedy itself is a like, you know, like if you have a leg, it is very good. But if you lose your leg, you get, you know, you get a mechanical leg inserted at the place of real leg. So remedy is like that mechanical leg, you know, things happen. But in that remedy also, the substitute gemstone is even worse. Right. So basically, according to me, there is no concept of substitute gemstone, at least for the planetary purpose. So if you are going to wear a gemstone for sun, you have to wear ruby only. Of course, this onyx, obsidian, and other gemstones, the sub gemstones, can also, one can also wear but according to me, it is wrong approach to mix these gemstones with plants. According to me, these gemstones have their own quality. These gemstones have their own quality and the gemstones have their own benefits. If you are going to wear these gemstones, you have to wear them for benefit only not as a substitute to any planetary remedy. For that example, opal is very famous as a substitute for, as a substitute gemstone for 
Venus. Some people also take it to be a substitute gemstone for moon. Though because pearl is not very costly, generally it is taken as a substitute gemstone for Venus only. Because diamonds are quite costly. Now opal is also of two types, you know, fire opal, normal opal, opal also comes in many colors. But according to me, opal neither serves as a substitute gemstone for moon, nor serves as a substitute gemstone for Venus. Technically speaking, opal is a sadhu ratna. Opal is a gemstone that should be worn by spiritual aspirants. The quality of opal is of giving solace. The quality of opal is giving loneliness. What is called ekant. So opal basically gives you loneliness, detachment from people, not being disturbed, having your own little world with no interference, securing a personal space. This is what opal does. If one is going to wear opal, one should only wear opal when they want these things to happen or occur in their life. The wearing of opal will help achieving these things. So only if achievement of these things is the target, then you should wear opal. Whereas the wearing of opal as a substitute for diamond or as a gemstone for either Venus or moon, I don't recommend, neither I have seen it working in my experience also. Right? Generally, 80% of the time, I don't recommend gemstones until and unless it is necessary. But many a times I do. Because, you know, mantra, you can only recommend to those, first of all, those who can chant. Because improper mantra chanting is very dangerous. It is because of improper mantra chanting, Rukta, who wanted to win over Indra and he was doing a yajna, got killed by Indra only because of a wrong pronunciation of a mantra. So suddenly, if one cannot pronounce mantra properly, or say one does not believe in Hinduism, then gemstone is the most apt, suitable, easily available remedy that can be given to them. So for this particular reason, though I don't prefer recommending gemstones, but I have been recommending them. And the results are quite miraculous. They go without any doubt, right? Because people have been, astrologists have been recommending a particular remedy since ages. It should have some truth into it. Right, so the truth is there, that's, that's not the case. Right, but this you need to understand. This needs to be understood. Right, that's the basic point. For, for that example, also, this other thing is uses in remedial measure, uses for coming out of disease. This have been done since ages. Basically speaking, in Ayurveda, if you read Ayurveda, you will see that a paste of gemstone is made. So either they crush the gemstone and make a paste, or they put the gemstone into the medical formula to you know get the energies of the gemstones in the formula, and then use that formula for medical purpose. This indicates that gemstones are quite sensitive. If they are kept into a particular water or a particular formula, they influence the formula or the water with their presence and with their attributes and with their qualities. This is what makes them gemstone. Right? Or for that matter, anything. You know, not only gemstones, but metals also. Metals also influence the influence the thing in which they are kept. And this is a known fact. And for this matter, crystals also do. Right? But today we will talk of gemstones only, not of crystals and not of metals. Right? Now, as I told you, according to Ayurveda, and since ancient times, gemstones are also used for, you know, eradication of disease in medical purpose, for therapeutic purpose also. Right, so uh, maximum of this sub gemstone serve this particular purpose. For an example, if anyone have problems related to excretion, piles, hemorrhoids, 
or anything as such, you know this. Uncontrolled excretion or any problem in excretion. Then it is the tiger's eye, which have been found to be very beneficial. For drinking intoxication related issues, obsidian and such things are highly recommended. The wearing of the same have been found to give amazing results. But the basic point is how much weight, carrot or rati should be chosen. That's the right point. What I have seen in my practice that 80% of the time the person is wearing the right gemstone. Right. 80% of the time the person is wearing the right gemstone but only because the gemstone is not placed in proper metal. The gemstone is not worn properly and specifically because the weight is not proper. Because of this particular reason, the effect of gemstone either is not coming or even if the effect is coming, that effect is not that effective to create a major difference in life. Right? So this is the basic point which needs to be taken into consideration. This is the major issue. Right? But the point is gemstones, substitute gemstones that I was talking about are generally used for medicinal, med medicinal purpose as a substitute for medication, specifically treating those things which cannot be treated by modern medicines today. Cancers, tumors, etc. Which cannot be treated with modern medicine. What I have found is if the problem is detected at an early stage, either by doctors or using ast astrological diagnosis, and if the appropriate gemstone of appropriate weight in appropriate finger in an appropriate ring or pendant is recommended in the starting stages, then either the disease does not develop or there is a successful operation or successful healing from the problem that happens for sure. We provided the fact that one identifies the problem early. And I think this is because of this reason. In classics, it is recommended to get an astrological reading every year. For this particular reason, there is a concept of a yearly chart that one should visit an astrologer at least once every year for sure. Right, so that all the upcoming things can be known in advance and appropriate remedial measures can be done. Because once the problem has started, then there is no purpose or no uses of then doing the remedy. And also doing the remedy after that will be, you know, will not be that much effective because the problem have already started. So if one does remedy before the start of the problem, there are high chances of the problem will vanish. If one starts remedy after the problem have already started, then it takes long time for the remedy to start work. Because first remedy works on the control, then eradication. And so it takes quite some time. So this is something that we won't have to understand. Now coming back to the major gemstones. So basically, there are two approaches with respect to gemstones. And there are three things that I will basically want to talk about in this particular video. But before I go deeper, there is a particular one day, there is a particular webinar that I am going to do on gemstones from this 1st of August. Though I am planning for a one day, it is a one day webinar. But still there are some lingering thoughts to increase the days also. So maybe two days it can be. Or I can increase the days as well. Because the content related to gemstone is quite high. Quite huge content I have related to gemstone that I have to teach. And in this particular webinar, I am going to answer the biggest question. That is the weight of the gemstone. How much weight of the gemstone should be? Some people believe that one-tenth of the weight of the person should be the weight of the gemstone. That's not true. That's a useless difference. Right. So really answering the question of what should be the weight of the gemstone. And along with this, when gemstone should be recommended, what gemstone should be recommended, how gemstone should be, one should wear the gemstone, which mantra to do before wearing the gemstone, which muhurta to choose while wearing the gemstone, all these things I am going to discuss. Right. Because these are the things which decide whether the remedy will work or not. Proper choice of gemstone, proper weight, proper setting, proper finger, proper metal, proper muhurta, and the proper way of 
प्योरिफाइंग और एनर्जाइजिंग द जेम स्टोन ऑल दिस टॉपिक्स आई एम गोइंग टू कवर इन द वेबिनार इन डेप्थ एंड सो दोज आर इंटरेस्टेड इन द मैटर ऑफ जेम स्टोन शुड कम टू द वेबिनार विच इज वेरी एक्सटेंसिव इफ आई टीच इट फॉर वन डे इट विल बी टू टू एंड हाफ आवर्स that pure knowledge and diluted back to back is what i do and as is my teaching method right two things are there i don't teach things which are copied from someone or which have been taught by anyone before so that will be also followed in the webinar and also i don't repeat my own technique also so what i am teaching in the youtube video will not be taught in the course for the student of the webinar watching this video will be recommended because the knowledge which will be given in the webinar will be apart from the knowledge which is already being given in this particular video now coming to the topic there are two approaches both these approaches needs to be followed approach number 1 says that if a planet is powerful say exalted so rashi mool trikona vargottam then the planet is already powerful then in this particular scenario the gemstone of the planet should not one should not be here one can safely ignore the gemstone of the planet also that's the basic point if a planet is powerful that planet does not need power however if a planet is a good planet if a planet is a beneficial planet but is lacking power then a gemstone is used to give power to the planet that is the basic approach another approach is and this is the approach of eastern india eastern indian approach east indian approach what i should say the east indian approach is that gemstones also pacify planets so if a planet is making a bad combination if a planet is making a bad yoga the gemstone related to that bad combination can all one can also be here but here some cautions one need to take and the problem i think uh, that is happening with today's astrology is people know the principle but people don't know how to actually apply the principle or they don't know the complete principle at all this is the particular reason where this is the particular reason why people cannot predict or assess anything properly now coming to my point so three cases can happen first of all you should understand that in a horoscope first lord fifth lord and ninth lord have to be very very strong for someone to be successful first house because it indicates health body how much the body will sustain name fame status authority and all these things one should have it fifth house indicate how your time goes you know loka yatra how you spend your time in this world either comfortably with discomfort is indicated by the fifth house along with this people who work under you your servants or people who are supposed to you know employed under you to serve you they are also indicated by the fifth house and along with this the intellect of the person the power to take good decisions or bad decisions the power of assessment and forecasting you know we assess that okay if this is the financial condition right now in 10 years this should be the case so okay this is my financial condition right now if i take a loan this much will be emi per month and will i be able to pay it or not and all these assessments and thoughts come from the fifth house of course for success this also have to be good right your servant should not leave you people working under you should not cheat you your assessment should be right and your time that you spend on this world should be comfortable and full of joy and happiness this is decided by the fifth house and now coming to the ninth house ninth house is basically one of the most important houses of the horoscope because it talks of luck everyone does hard work but the outcome of the hard work the success or otherwise is decided by luck only right thing at right time leads to success right thing at wrong time wrong thing at right time and these things lead to failures in life so because ninth house indicates luck and not only that ninth house also indicates guru and also indicate god both of them blesses so the blessings of life whether it is a blessing of having a good family having some property having some inheritance all these blessings and the favor of fortune and luck you know realizing the opportunity 
being present at the right time in front of the right person. And all these things, this luck is indicated by the fifth house. This one, five and nine houses are the most important and crucial houses. They have to be powerful for someone to be successful in life. And these are the houses which are not negative at all. Other houses may have some negativity, but these are the houses which are not negative at all. So the basic point is that the Lord of these houses have to be powerful. Otherwise, issues can happen. For this particular reason, if the first, fifth and ninth Lords are powerful, it is okay. One will be successful in life. One should be successful itself. One should be successful beforehand. And if they are not successful, then the right dasha and dasha one have to wait for. And success will be there for sure. There can be no case when first, fifth and ninth house are powerful and the person is not successful. If you think person is successful, but one fifth, ninth house is not powerful, you don't know how to read a horoscope. You cannot assess a planet, leave it. <clears throat> okay. The first point is the first, fifth, or ninth lord is somehow weak. Not giving the result because they are powerless. Powerless planet cannot give the result, cannot manifest the yogas, etc., whatever he is contributing into. So the gemstone of first, fifth, or ninth lord should one should be here. This is the basic thumb rule. Now the point is, if the first, fifth, or ninth lord also become lord of other bad houses, then what to do? Lagna Lord, the gemstone of Lagna Lord, one can safely wear at any given point of time, no matter the Lagna Lord is 6th Lord, 8th Lord or 12th Lord, does not matter. Regarding the matter of the 5th Lord and 9th Lord, if they are the Lord of the 6th, 8th and 12th house, then what to do? Any of 5th or the 9th Lord, if they become the Lord of the 8th house, their gemstone, one should not wear at all. If they become the Lord of the 12th house or 6th house, then you have to see where the Mulutrikona sign or the positive Rashi of the planet is falling. If the Mulutrikona Rashi of the planet is falling in the 5th house or the 9th house, then you can wear the gemstone of the planet without any second thought. If the Mulutrikona Rashi of the planet is also falling in the 6th house or 12th house, then you have to see where the planet is situated. If the planet is situated in a good house, Kendra's 147 10 houses or Kona's 159 houses or 11th house or second house, then you can wear the gemstone of the planet. Otherwise, you cannot wear the gemstone of the planet. The simple case. What should be the weight of the gemstone? In which finger you should wear it? In which metal you should wear it? Should you wear it into a ring? Should you wear it into a necklace? Which murta to wear, etc. This I am going to cover in the webinar. So that I am not covering into the video. In video, let me deal with a simple topic. Which gemstone to wear? And I am only talking of standard and normal principles that I am talking in this particular video. There are few, many principles which I am not telling in this video. That I will tell in the course only. Exclusive for students is what I will say. Normal principle, normal consideration I am talking about in this video. These considerations are very helpful. right? And whatever is going to be taught in the webinar will not contradict these principles at all. right? Webinar will have additional knowledge. This is the basic knowledge. Right? Additional knowledge, basic knowledge goes in complement with each other. This needs to be understood. Okay, addition always remains addition. Multiplication is a higher dimension of addition. Right? So because you learn multiplication, that does not mean you should forget addition. Right? Multiplication is basically addition done multiple times. Right? This is the differentiation between YouTube videos and the course. In course, I teach you a multiplication. In videos, I teach you addition. Both works. And none of them are contradictory to each other. This needs to be understood. Synchronization is the game. Synchronization is the basic thing that one have to, uh, one should know how to do synchronization. Now, this is the first approach, first, fifth, and ninth law. Now, another thing is the second point. Now, see, we are talking of first, fifth, and ninth law. We are not talking of the planet in 1st, 5th and ninth house. The biggest problem what I have found with everyone is astrology learner. They don't listen to what is being told. They start thinking what is not getting told. So generally question come up, sir, what if a planet is situated in the 1st house? Are bhai, I have clearly told the gemstone for 1st Lord or should be here. I haven't talked of planet in the 1st house. So basically, Lordship matters. Placement is wrong. 
This is a very simple thing that one should understand. Try to understand a point. If you want to attain knowledge, then don't think that you are more smart than the one who is giving the knowledge. If you think that you are over, you are more smarter than the one giving the knowledge, then I am very sorry for your pursuit of knowledge. That that will not get fulfilled, right? And only listen what is being told. Don't listen what is not getting told, right? Coming back to my point. So planet in the first, fifth, and ninth house does not matter. The Lord of these houses are basically what we are dealing about right now. Now another point is only these planets are good. That's not the case. Another thing is yoga. A planet can make a Raj Yoga. A planet can make a Dhana Yoga. A connection between fourth house, fifth house, set one. First, fifth, and ninth house, set two. This connection between set one and set two, connection uh, aspecting each other, being placed in houses of each other, conjoined with each other, makes a Raj Yoga. Connection between second house, eleventh house, fifth house. Uh, connection between second house, eleventh house. In any way, makes a dhana yoga. Wealth combination. This is basic. Now, despite having the raj yoga or dhana yoga, raj yoga indicates success, authority, name, fame, status, power, prestige, freedom to do anything that you want, and multiple things. Now there can be a case when raj yoga is present. In the horoscope, but the effect of Raj Yoga is not felt. Why this happens? You must have encountered many such horoscopes also. But why does this happen? This happens because the planet producing the Raj Yoga is not powerful. Raj Yoga producer planet have to be powerful. Otherwise, if the planet is not powerful, the result of Raj Yoga cease, cease to exist. Does not exist, disappear. Same goes for the case of Dhani Yoga also. There can be a wealth combination, but the planet creating the wealth combination can be weak. And in this particular scenario, the result of the wealth combination may not happen. There can be a problem. There is one particular thing that I will want to discuss about that the planet who is debilitated is bad for Raji Yoga, but not bad for Dhani Yoga. Debilitated planet can destroy Raji Yoga, but will not destroy Dhani Yoga. So debilitation should not be taken as a weakness for Dhani Yoga, but should be taken as a weakness for Raji Yoga. Other than that, being situated in a malefic Navamsha, combustion, planetary fight, being situated in an inimical Rashi, less point in schedule, etc., makes a planet weak. And that I think you probably know. The point is, if a planet is making a good combination, if a planet is making a Raja Yoga, but becomes weak, he becomes powerless to give the result of the Raj Yoga or any yoga that he is producing. To strengthen the planet and further get the result of the Raj Yoga or Dhani Yoga, whatever the case may be, one can wear the gemstone of the planet who is weak. And in this particular scenario, with the help of the gemstone, the weakness of the planet one will overcome and will get the good result. Now here one should understand a point. Taking from the previous case. Suppose, it is Capricorn Ascendant, Mercury is the Lord of the 6th house and 9th house. This Mercury sits in conjunction with Venus, who is the Lord of the 10th house and 5th house. Now this Mercury becomes a Raj Yoga. This Mercury makes a Raj Yoga. Out of the 4 houses, 3 houses makes a Raj Yoga and it is only the 6th house Lordship of Mercury, which is destroying the Raj Yoga. In this case, one can wear the gemstone of Mercury. Same goes with Aquarius Ascendant. You say Aquarius ascendant, Mercury will be the lord of the 5th house and 8th house. The Murotrikona sign of Mercury falling in the 8th house. You say added to this point, this Mercury is also situated in the 3rd house. So Murotrikona Rashi of Mercury is also falling in the 8th house, that is a bad house, and Mercury itself is situated in the 3rd house, that is once again a bad house. So Emerald should not be this Aquarius native Emerald, he cannot be here. But anyhow, if this Mercury is connected by Venus, Venus, he can get connected either by exchange or conjunction. It is situated in the third house, exchange will not happen. Conjunction only can happen. Or this Mercury is connected to Mars, either by aspect or conjunction. Then in this particular scenario, for this Aquarius Ascendant, if this Mercury, who have his Murutrikona Rashi in the eighth house, basically gemstone one should not be here. But if this Mercury makes any connection with Mars or Venus, it makes a Rajiyo. 
in this particular case because raj yoga is happening and because the mercury is connected to raj yoga giver planets mercury stops behaving as the eighth lord and start start behaving only as the fifth lord because he is contributing in raj yoga in this particular scenario one can wear emerald so the another point another point is if there is a raj yoga dhan yoga or other good combination that is being that is happening in the horoscope that is manifesting in the horoscope but the planet making the yoga is weak hence the result of the yoga is not being received by the native in that scenario the planet who is weak and is disturbing or destroying or weakening the raj yoga the gemstone of the planet can one can wear and that will be very beneficial will help him manifest the good result of raj yoga dhan yoga whatever be the case the third and the most important point there can be a bad combination otherwise there can be pap kartari or other such bad combinations in horoscope. This bad combination can disturb. You say ninth lord can get aspect of a malefic which can make the ninth lord weak. Or there can be a papakartari on lagna or lagna lord. This will tend to make the ascendant weak. In this scenario, keeping in mind that gemstones also serve as serve the purpose of making a planet positive or pacifying a planet, one can wear the gemstone of the planet who is afflicting for pacification. But in this particular matter, what you should keep in mind that you should only wear the gemstone of the planet who is friend to the Lagna Lord. Now friendship is decided based on two methods, permanent friendship and temporary friendship. Permanent friendship, I think you know about and a permanent friendship, so you will already know Sun, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, K2 are mutually friendly to each other and inimical to the second set. Second set is Saturn, Venus, Mercury, Rahu. They are mutually friendly to each other and inimical to the first set. This is a basic thumb rule. Now the functional friendship says that if a planet is, suppose a planet is, uh, sorry, any planet situated in second house, third house, fourth house, 10th house, 11th house, 12th house from a planet. Any planet situated in 2nd, 12th, 3rd, 11th, 4th, 10th house from a planet becomes his temporary friend and in other houses remains temporary enemy. A planet afflicting another planet and with that affliction weakening the horoscope. If this planet who is afflicting becomes either the permanent friend or becomes the temporary friend of the Lagna Lord. Then in this particular scenario, you can wear the gemstone of the planet to further pacify the planet and proper wearing of the gemstone with proper setting in a proper metal gemstone of proper weight and purifying the planet, purifying the gemstone properly and then wearing it in a good muhurta will surely lead to the result 100%. Take my guarantee on it. I can write it on a paper and sign it for you. The Shubha Maluk told you this, this will happen without any doubt. Okay. So say for this example, Cancer Ascendant. Moon is debilitated. Now this moon is getting debilitated in the sign of Mars. Mars is the problem creator. But he is friendly to the Lagna Lord naturally also. Now, if this Mars is also placed in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 10th, 11th, 12th house from Moon, then he becomes temporary friend also. And in this particular case, one can wear the gemstone of Mars. One can also otherwise also wear the gemstone of Mars for an Cancer Ascendant because that is a Raj Yoga creator planet, right? That is the Lord of Akindra. And that is the Lord of the 5th house. So one can wear the gemstone otherwise also. But in this case as well. Right? So this is the third principle to choose which gemstone one should wear. Applying all these three planets, you should identify the gemstone that you should wear. And then you wear the gemstones. And I am very sure, take a guarantee from my side that doing this properly will give you luck, will give good luck, will turn misfortune into fortune and will change your life for better. Without any doubt, this is guaranteed. Right? Other than this, 
if a planet is producing good result but is somehow weak and in the dashantra dasha of the planet is going on and because of the inherent weakness in the birth chart the planet is not able to give good result in his dashantra dasha then in that case gemstones based on dashantra dasha one can also wear though i don't recommend this but if the problem is too much one can wear so four principles i have told you so far based on these four principles identify the gemstones that you have to wear and wear the gemstone properly in a proper muhurta in a proper setting right but after purifying the gemstone properly then take my guarantee that good results of the planet you will start you will face for sure and i give you a time stamp that 40 days 40 days from the day you wear the gemstone you will start feeling the result and 2 years down the lane when you look back 2 years later to the day when you wore the gemstone and your condition today you will see that there have been a great change that have happened in your life you are no more the same person neither you are into the same condition that you were 2 years before this is from my area if you want to learn about gemstones the this is the webinar that i am doing i have talked about it many times i think in the video so this is webinar that i am doing you should come into this webinar and even those who have only basic knowledge of astrology only know houses rashis kind of a thing can also come to the webinar that i am doing this webinar so that it can be useful for all right so that people can choose gemstones themselves and choose the gemstones for their family members and can help themselves and others right even those who have basic knowledge of astrology beginner kind of students can also come and join the webinar and learn thank you for watching the video and taking your time out namaste